Thanks for joining us. I'm Randy Holland, and this is a brief overview of cross-connection control for our domestic water supply. We'll cover what backflow is, why it's bad, and what the waterworks industry has devised in the effort to neutralize its risk by explaining the basic function of backflow preventers. So, why do we need a cross-connection control program at all? Well, that's easy. Safe drinking water. But how does backflow prevention protect drinking water? I think this ancient art illustrates the point perfectly. Our friend has attached a pressurized sprayer to his garden hose spigot. Because the pressure in that sprayer has now overcome the ambient pressure in his home's water line, some of that sprayer's chemicals are now flowing back into the city's water supply at the street. At the same time, his neighbor draws a glass of water from her tap, giving new meaning to the word fire water. Okay, the funniest thing about this picture isn't anything I've said yet. It's actually the dog. I don't think the illustrator intended it, but there's got to be either fertilizer or weed killer in that pressurized sprayer. And he's offering this dog a ball that's been rolling around in that grass. I have a theory. Maybe this guy hates his neighbor and this is actually her dog. Could be he's hoping they'll both get the proverbial dirt nap tonight. Backflow happens when either or both of two events occur. The example shown here and in the previous illustration is back pressure. It happens when there is a higher pressure existing in the downstream piping than in the supply piping, allowing downstream substances to be pushed back into the potable water supply. Pumps, thermal expansion, elevation, these are among the most common causes. The other event that causes backflow is back siphon. Back siphon happens when there is a negative pressure in the supply piping, allowing downstream substances to reverse direction and be pulled back into the potable water supply. Typical causes are water main breaks, or even higher than usual withdrawal rates, such as a flowing fire hydrant. You, as a designer, may specify one of two types of backflow preventer generally, the double check valve assembly or the reduced pressure zone valve assembly. As the subtext indicates, the difference between the two devices is perceived hazard. But how do you determine hazard? Now, that's a good question. And the simple answer is that the purveyor determines it, but most every jurisdiction is different. Every city has its own list of named examples of what constitutes the hazard threshold. But they all stipulate that if the anticipated use as you know it is not named explicitly, then they reserve the right to make the decision during codes review. It's important to understand that you cannot, as a designer, overprotect the incoming water service, meaning there is no penalty for providing the higher degree of protection. So you should ask yourself, is there wisdom at all of providing the lower level of risk protection? So let's have a quick look at how these things work. The double check assembly was developed in the 50s, and for what it does, it does well. Anytime pressure on the downstream side exceeds pressure on the supply or public side, the valves close and the water stops flowing backwards. Keep in mind that no remedy exists in the event of a malfunction of the valve closure or if debris in the line causes the valves to not close completely. Before we move on to the RP, I want to just cover the detector assembly. The detector assembly can apply to either one of the backflow preventers we're talking about today, either the double check or the RPZ. The difference in the detector assembly is it essentially consists of a bypass assembly that piggybacks the primary backflow preventer with a meter in order to detect any unauthorized use of water and or leaks on the system. Now, mind you, it doesn't provide an accurate measure of water flow at, since it's such a smaller diameter device. And here's, by the way, as it exists in reality, you can see that it's a much smaller set of pipes that come across that double check assembly and the meter uh, piggybacks right over the top of it. The purpose is not to measure the flow but to simply indicate flow and to detect leaks. The reduced pressure zone assembly consists of two independently operating check valves just like the double check plus a hydraulically operated differential relief valve located below the first check valve. The static or no flow condition both check valves are closed. Pressure on the supply side of the valve is about 8 PSI higher than the pressure in the reduced pressure zone side, 
so the relief valve remains in the closed position. When water flows from the supply side, both check valves open. The hydraulic relief valve is also held in the closed position again because the pressure on the supply side remains higher than that of the reduced pressure zone side. This illustration shows how the RPZ protects the water supply in all situations. It's really quite elegant, but it does come at a cost to the area around the device. When a negative supply pressure occurs, both of the check valves are closed. At that moment, the relief valve will open every time and evacuate all the water between the valves. Well, some think that that event defines the limit of what water can ever flow into a drain, but that's just not so. If you look closely, you can see that a small pebble has lodged in the number two check valve. Because the number two check valve is not closing, water will continue to flow out of the relief valve until the private lines are cleared. Now, if this is a four-story building, that's a lot of water. Now, consider a full failure of the number two check valve. Now you have water flowing through the relief valve at head pressure. Again, if this is a large or multi-story building, that's a lot of water very fast. Finally, consider a failure of both check valves. In that event, water will flow at a pressure higher than the supplied pressure because you have to add the head pressure to the supplied pressure and this water will flow until those valves are manually closed. This picture was tweeted this summer by a Nashville backflow tester. It reads, this is why we do it. A tiny pebble can render them useless. We test them right. Thank you for taking time to review this presentation on cross connection control backflow 101. Please visit our YouTube channel for more professional hours development programming.